Hello and welcome to the event proxy tutorial. In this tutorial, you're going to be learning how to use Playmaker's event proxy wizard to send events from animations into your FSMs. To get the event proxy wizard, we can come up here to Playmaker add-ons ecosystem and let's open up the ecosystem browser and search event proxy. Okay, and then down here, you should see this package, the event proxy wizard. Okay, so I'm gonna get that and just wait a second for it to download, hit import, let it do its thing. When it turns green and it says imported, we're good to go. So I'm gonna close this window and then I can come up to Playmaker, add-ons, tools, the event proxy wizard. This may take a second to load. Okay, now we have this proxy creator window. What the event proxy creator does is it creates a component for us to put onto game objects, which will listen for events in a similar way that a Playmaker FSM does. And then it will relay that event to a Playmaker FSM. So it's a little intermediary component to receive and send events, hence proxy. Now, why would you need this? Why do you need an event proxy? Well, you'll see in just a second, but essentially what we're gonna be using it for is, if I just move this to the side for a second, I have this NPC here, and this NPC, if I open it up, you'll see that it just has this one state in it, play animation, and it has this animator play, so it plays a walk animation. And if I hit control six with my NPC selected, it'll bring up the animations on it. And we have an idle animation and a walk animation. Now in this walk animation, if I just, if I just play this, okay, it's a looping animation and the animation only goes as far as it needs to, to play a step from each foot and then it loops back around. So it has a seamless animation of walking. And what I wanna do is play a footstep sound effect at exactly the same frame that the foot lands on the floor. So what I could do is come here into this animation and I can jog forward to right about there. So right here is where that one foot lands and that's where it is in this timeline. It's about 10 frames in and I can hit this little button up here, this little white line it says add event. Okay, now it's a very tiny little line. It's now blue over here. If I move out of the way and deselect it, you can see that it added this white line here, right? But if I select it, it turns blue. And up here in the inspector, we can see that it has an animation event. And then it asks us to select a function. Right now there's no function selected and it gives us all these other options. Now, a common thing that you'll see people using with Playmaker is the send event string. And that way you can send a string to the first FSM on this game object. And so if I select this, it'll let me type in a string and here you could type in whatever you want. But people, what they usually do is have a string here that matches with an event in their FSM. So for example, I'll write my string event. So at exactly this point, it's gonna send this my string event. And that's just sending a string to the first FSM on our game object. So it has to be in this same game object. The object, this NPC object that has the animator component on it, that's the one with the animation. It has to be on the same game object. And it has to be the first FSM in line so that means the FSM at the very top. You'll see I only have this one here, this footsteps one. So if I wanted to add another FSM, this one, let's say it's like, I don't know, fighting. It would only send to this footsteps one. But if I put this fighting one above it, now the fighting one would receive that string event that we created. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this one. And for our footsteps, I'm gonna hop in here. And what I'll do is I'll come into events and I'll add a new event called my string event. Okay, it's spelled exactly the same way I typed into that animation event, right? Lowercase m, capital S, and capital E. Okay, so I enter that in, and then I make it into a global event. And now, if I say right click and add transition, my string event, and then send off here, and then let's say I add in another one, my string event, and I'm just gonna make a little chain so we can see it kind of firing off and going through. So it does, just so it doesn't happen too quickly. This is only for the example of showing how it runs. Okay, I'll just add one more and I'll send it back here. So now if I come back to my scene and I hit play, okay, you'll see that every time that one foot hits the floor, it sends that event. 
this is very useful. This is very helpful for doing all sorts of really cool things that are related to timing with animations. Like if you wanted to have the logic of an attack only to process at the right frame, like say when the sword of your character is fully extended or something like that, or if they're punching or kicking or whatever it is, and you only want something to happen at a very specific point in the animation, this is what you want to do. However, the limitations of this, like I said, are that it can only send on that one game object on the first FSM in that game object. So what happens when you want to send different types of events? And what happens when you want to send them to different FSMs? And what happens if the FSM you want to send to isn't at the top of your list? Well, that's where this event proxy wizard comes in. So what I'm going to do now, create an event proxy, which will be able to talk to our FSM and our animations, and it'll let us pick and choose which game objects and which FSMs we want to respond. You'll see that it says right here, use this when you expect Unity or third parties to fire messages and you want to catch that message as a Playmaker event. I'm gonna leave these set by default, um, but the namespace you might want to change to whatever your project's name is or say your company name or just your personal name. And then the public method or message name, this is kind of like the string event. So this is what the name of your event should be. For this one, we'll call footstep. And then I'll hit create, okay? And then it lets us select in project, this button right here. So it's a C-sharp script that you can find here in Playmaker Custom Scripts event proxies. Now I can go into my NPC prefab. I could drag and drop this into its inspector. And this is what our event proxy looks like. This is an event proxy component. So it says footstep proxy. And you'll see that what's cool about this is that you can actually select your event target. So for this one, it's owner, so it would be targeting the NPC, right? But you could select game object and then drag and drop anything you'd want in here. For example, we could come over here to this root of our character rig and then add in an FSM and we'll call this footsteps sound effects. I'm just going to close this event proxy wizard. And if I hit edit, we can put in an audio play action. And it says it requires an audio source component. So I'm just going to click to add that really quick. And then I'm going to drag in this player footstep sound effect. And then in events, I'm going to add an event called footstep. OK, and I'll, and I'll have this marked as global. So this is a global event when it's checked. OK, now I'm going to add that transition footstep and I'll have it send back to itself. So every time this FSM receives the footstep event, it'll play through this. It'll play a footstep sound. Okay, now back at our NPC, I could drag and drop this game object in here, and the FSM event will be footstep. And actually, I've almost forgotten the most important part. We actually have to come up to our NPC and then open up the animation that's hitting Control-6, or you can come over here to Window, animation, animation. I'm just going to come over here to the walk animation. And for this send event, if I click on it, this is the one that we had my string event. Now, instead of send event string, you'll see that we have a new option here for footstep. So I'm just going to select that and it'll send that footstep to this game object that we have. And it should play our footstep sound every time that one foot is down. So go back to our scene and hit play. There you go. This makes sending animation events way more flexible because now I can send an event. Well, I could do it for individual feet. That would be kind of outrageous if I had <laughs> a footstep for a left foot and a right foot, but I could if I wanted to. And that also means that I would be able to have a separate animation event for a sword swing, a punch, literally anything I wanted talking to any FSM on any game object in the NPC. For example, if I popped into the NPC, let's say I was completely out of my mind and I went uh, and I renamed this footstep sound effect to left footstep. And then I created another FSM and called this right footstep, you know, like a total madman. I was like, yeah, I'm going to have a separate FSM for each footstep. And in here, I'm going to have the same setup, which is audio play. It's going to play that footstep sound effect and uh, have this transition footstep send back to itself. OK, and then I can hop over back to my NPC. And in here, I can open up the event proxy wizard again. This time, 
I'll make a new event proxy called second footstep. Hit create. Then I'll select that second footstep, select my NPC, and I'll drag and drop that right underneath the first one. Okay, and for this one, it'll also send that footstep event. But now what I'll do is I'll change it from game object to FSM component. So these ones focus on a specific FSM component. Okay, this one too. And what I can do is lock this inspector, right click on inspector and say add a tab, and we'll just add a new inspector in here. And since this one's locked, we'll still be able to look at our proxy components. But now I can select this game object and it'll show me the components on this one. I have my right footstep and my left footstep. I can drag the left footstep one into the first component slot for footstep proxy. I'm just gonna close this. And I'll take the right footstep FSM, and drag that into the second footstep proxy FSM component. And I'll go ahead and close this. Now with my NPC selected, I can open up animations by hitting control six, go over to the walk animation, and we have the first one, footstep. But we need to add in a second one. So I'm gonna watch the feet over here, right about there. So I can hit this button to add new event. I can select this event. Don't forget to unlock this inspector so now we can see our animation event as long as we click on it. Okay, and the function that I'm gonna have selected will be second footstep. All right. I come back to the scene and I play this. We have footsteps for each foot and they're running on two separate FSMs and the events that we're getting are from an animation on a totally separate game object. See we have two of these FSMs running. We have the left footstep and the right footstep. Left footstep's running, you can see it blinking every time it gets a footstep. Right footstep is running every time it gets a footstep. And they're both getting that event sent from a completely different game object at completely different times. From here up in the NPC game object, we have this animator with the animation on it that's sending those footsteps to these event proxies. And then these event proxies are telling the FSMs on this separate game object right here to these individual FSMs. Now, would you use this to make sound effects for individual feet? Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're working with a pirate where they have a peg leg and one footstep should be like a normal boot sound and the other is kind of like a hollow wooden thud sound for their peg leg. I don't know, I'm not the one making the game. That's for you to figure out. But now you at least have this very powerful, very flexible way of sending events directly from animations down to the specific frame. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.